the only clever thing I'm going to do today. Um, I bring my technology with me. I, um, my name is Ian Dunn. I'm Deputy Vice Chancellor at Coventry University, and I'm very grateful for the invite. I, uh, I'd like to. I'm not using any of that stuff. I just want to talk to you about uh, um, uh, something that we've been doing at Coventry. I'm delighted that Mark is in the front row uh, in partnership with FutureLearn. Um, first of all, I have to make reference to Hugh's comment about um, the 16 takes. Um, I always thought I was quite, you know, in front of camera, I thought I, you know, I'm quite competent, I can, I can tell my story, I can do that thing. Then my uh, media people told me I had to walk and talk, and I was completely hopeless. I had 16 takes was, a, was an underestimate, I think, of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of that ability. Um, but the point is um, that um, uh, the quality of the way in which we put that information across, I think, is, is really, really important. What I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about um, uh, what we've been doing in Coventry, why we think it's quite interesting, why it's interesting from a, a pedagogic perspective of, for, for us. But I'd like to put it into, into, into context, into three, three, three parts. The first of which is to state what's already been said today, which is that all of our learners are digitally enabled. They're all cloud-based learners. They're all, you only have to look around a room like this to see um, so many of you using devices. I walk into a lecture theatre uh, uh, for any subject, whether it's digitally connected or not, and all of the students will be, will be engaged and in, in connected to, um, to all sorts of other sources, some of whom may actually be relevant to the class and some of whom may not, but it, you know, they're all connected in some sort of way. So I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, um, about on-campus learners uh, and, and the, the cloud and digital learning on campus, to talk a little bit about Coventry University Online and what we've done there, which is not dissimilar in many ways to King's Online, and uh, I, I think I'd like to draw some parallels. And the third is, is, is perhaps what comes next, and, and the disruption that is, uh, and Gideon made reference to, to those organisations, the Apples, the Amazons, the Googles of this world, and the opportunities they are, are, are bringing, and the partnership possibilities, and if we don't take some of those opportunities, the way in which they'll disrupt us completely in, in many cases, and, and many of us may not still be around if, if they chose to, uh, to disrupt us fundamentally. So first of all, on campus, and, and, and we all, I, I know, use learning management systems, um, virtual learning environments to support our learning. And over the last year or two, as we've I, been engaged in this journey of Coventry University Online, I've really started to think about the virtual learning environment and the way in which we, we've used it. And actually, the way in which we've used it at Coventry has been uh, very much to our convenience rather than necessarily to the convenience of learning and to, to support teaching. And what do I mean by that? If I think about the, 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 the platforms that we all make use of, Blackboard, Moodle, um, Canvas, D2L, all of, all of those sorts of systems, the more I think about it, the more they look like sort of empty columns into which we pour students and content. And, and they don't break out of those columns at any point. They can't get across um, learning. And when we talk about our learners now, they're all connected. They're all, all of the time, socially connected or, or, uh, and desire to be connected in their learning. You know, numbers of students who approach me, and I'm delighted by this, tell me that they want to not only be contained within their, their subject of study, but they want to learn, which is a fantastic thing. And, and we've actually, in a way, stopped them doing that by, by, by pouring them into this, into this column and, uh, and containing them for, for good reason in some ways. But now's the time to, to rethink that. And Slack is a, is a particularly interesting um, tool that, that brings a, a different possibility. And there are other learning environments now being created out there, some really interesting ed tech companies in this city doing some um, uh, amazing things. I have to mention Aula, um, that many of you will have heard of and, and perhaps are engaged with, and the way in which they're looking at um, how, how learners, how you can connect learners across rather than just put them into, the, into those columns. So I think we need to think not only about um, online learners, but our on-campus learners as online learners and how, how we support them in, in, in that process. So that would be my first point. The second, which is what I was asked to talk about, which is Coventry University Online. Coventry's been um, um, trying to innovate in the learning space on, in a number of different ways over, over the last few years. And we knew that we were falling behind in terms of developing our online presence and our uh, ability to deliver our programs online. 
So we've, we've, we've taken many steps and we've been down a, a journey of working with some of the big uh, uh, online, uh, the OPMs, the online program um, management companies, um, to explore whether, whether that was a route that we were going to take. And we had some success and we, 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 we trialled that. What we discovered, however, and I think this is where the similarity with Kings Online, um, that we wanted to be, uh, to feel more in control. That isn't to say that the, the OPMs were taking away that control, but by nature of working in, the, in those sorts of partnerships, we felt that the on-campus and the online w were becoming separate things, mm -hmm. and that that wasn't the way in which we wanted to go. We want the online and the on-campus to be absolutely one, that, that we um, ultimately, the goal is that uh, uh, an online learner may choose to become an on-campus learner and then to drift back to being an online learner as they progress through their course of study. Uh, and why should we make that not possible for them? Um, what, what is the difference? Do we devalue one if we, if we turn it to, you know, if, you, if I was to take a, a master's degree in nursing and, uh, and to deliver it on campus and then to say, uh, I have another version which is online and to put brackets online at the back of the end of the degree certificate, have I devalued it by, by, by doing that? Um, uh, and that didn't seem like the right thing to do. And that's taken us on a, on a, on a further journey, which is about wholesale, wholesale university-wide curriculum uh, redesign, so that all of our curriculum is now in the process of being rebuilt on a fairly long-term project um, to, to be ready to be online if we choose to take it online. Doesn't mean we necessarily will do, but it, it, it has to be uh, possible. So, the, the steps that we've taken, we created Coventry University Online as a separately wholly owned subsidiary. We did that as a very deliberate act. Um, rather than it being a department of the university, we actually created it as a subsidiary company. Um, that allows us um, a sort of flexibility. Um, it, it sort of felt more like the way in which being entrepreneurial and being innovative uh, was the right thing to do in order to, to shake things a little bit. Ultimately, we may absorb it back into the university. It may well become a department, but right now it's, uh, it was set up this way. And Coventry University Online is set up to do three things. The first, so it, it takes no ownership of the academic content. The academic content stays absolutely with the faculty or the educational entity where the content is, is, is housed. So it's a partnership with, um, with, with, with the faculty. But it, it is a, a studio function. So project managers, instructional designers, learning designers, media producers, uh, and, and, and all of the people that we've, we've already talked about. It's a second function is about student management, and it's about the student experience management and managing the student who is uh, a truly online learner. And the third uh, element is, is tutor management. It, it's about recruiting, on behalf of the faculty, academic staff to be the online tutors to support the students uh, in, in a very particular sort of way. And all of that is, uh, is provided as a sort of a service um, to, the, to, to the faculty. What have we done so far? We've taken the first, um, well, we, uh, we, we, we took our first degree, full online <coughs> master's degree, um, live uh, in January. The next five went live in May, and six more go live um, uh, in a few days' time. So we'll have a dozen um, uh, uh, master's degrees, full master's degrees uh, available online. It's a fairly ambitious sort of uh, production schedule. It's uh, rather killed us. Um, but anyway, uh, so, uh, we've now got a fairly uh, under good understanding as to, as to what's required. All of this is done uh, in a particular way in partnership with Future Learn. And so um, we, 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 we signed a, what's, what's effectively an enterprise level uh, agreement to build our content into learning objects, which you might call MOOCs or SPOCs. Um, uh, so each module has these learning objects, the first of which we truly make available in every module as an open uh, piece of learning. The next ones are behind a paywall um, at the moment. My, op my ambition is that we make all of our content on all of our online degrees open and uh, available free of charge. I don't believe that's where we add value. I, I think that making the content is expensive to produce. Um, but that's just the way in which we curate and bring that content together. Um, what we then do with that content, with the learner, and how we take them through the complex problem solving and the, the case-based sort of approaches, is where I think we really add, add value and where we can charge. 
And so it's, it's about that separation of um, assessment for um, knowing stuff, knowing content, and assessing knowing how to and why and all of the complex stuff, which I think is really uh, what, we're, what we're all about. Um, we've had a hundred challenges, a hundred challenges a day. Um, organizationally, it's caused us to change. Um, structurally, it, it's forcing us to change, to think about how we organize academically, the, 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 the both the content creation, but also the, um, the academic administration. Um, many universities, I think if we tr look truly and, and hard at, uh, at our systems, are a few years behind perhaps the, the way in which our, our learners think um, uh, uh, and operate. Um, and so this, is, this has been a fantastic opportunity. The point that was made, I think Gideon made the point a, a few moments ago, which was about the investment that's required behind this. This is not about um, doing something which is simple, cheap, and, and something you can just roll out over a, a, over a short time. I had to seek um, a very significant amount of funding from, from, from my board. For the first time ever in setting up a subsidiary entity, they allowed me, afforded me the, um, a, a, a large envelope of cash, treating it rather like you would invest in a building so that I have a long-term opportunity to build something, recognizing that this isn't a, a one-year, two-year, three-year return, but a, at least 10 before we start to make any sort of financial return on this basis. But um, I th we thought it was rather important that we, uh, that we took that step. Um, and so Coventry University Online is now functioning. It's a, a team of approaching 100 people who operate on behalf of the, um, of the university and are producing some fantastic content. And I'm delighted to see the video that we saw at the, at the beginning with a similar sort of style. Um, we haven't chosen that particular style, but we've done some, some, some rather interesting things. Um, and what's really fascinating is the, um, is the way in which academic staff have engaged in the process. We started out with a, with a program of what we were going to take online and have been subsequently inundated by people saying, please take, can we take my program online? I, I, want, to, I want to take something I into this form. Um, yes, they're the innovators, but innovators from within who then take the message to their colleagues is just the most powerful way in which we can change the organization. I wanted just to make one final set of comments, which is the, um, which is my point about disruption. Um, the UN talk about higher education needing to expand from its current 700 million places to 1.4 billion places over the next 40 years. On the whole, it's taken us a thousand years to create the first 700 million places. Um, over the next 40 years, to, to double the size of higher education provision is certainly not going to be um, a case of building physical infrastructure in the, in the way that we have done. This has to have a part in, 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 um, in the higher education mix. If I'm a student in Mexico City and I, um, uh, I need to study to upskill or to reskill, the idea of me traveling, uh, for anyone that knows Mexico City, the idea of traveling anywhere in Mexico City is a challenge, but to travel for those, if I've got a job to pay for my family um, and I'm traveling two hours uh, to get to a campus, it's just not going to happen. So how do we provide the super low cost, the uh, competence base, the, um, the AI-led type um, uh, degree course, the, the micro-badged, badged, credentialed type uh, routes to, to, to a higher education. And I think we have to start to, um, to think really hard and really seriously now. Not to say that that will replace the forms of higher education that we, that we currently know, not to replace the campus-based stuff, but there is going to be some sort of disruption that, um, that we can influence and we can be part of and I'll tell you now, the Amazons of this world, the Apples of this world, are absolutely putting huge amounts of resource in thinking into, into that as we speak. I, my, I, my notebook is at least inspired by technology. It's, from, it, it's a gift from Amazon. Um, um, so yeah, there are a little nods towards, uh, uh, towards something. But they, they're pouring um, huge amounts of thinking into how we bring together um, learning in a, in a very different sort of way. Like I say, not to replace what we do on campus, not to replace these other models of online learning for the full service online sort of provision, but there has to be a space for another form of, uh, of online that I think we need to uh, think very hard about. So thank you very much for, for the time, and uh, thanks for inviting me. Thank you.